Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode in the channel. Thanks for tuning in again. In the last episode we went ahead and kind of provided a little bit of quality of life features here within the app, made certain things a bit more responsive and kind of just some slight improvements to the overall UX, uh, the user experience here when adding some items, saving them, and returning back to a screen that shouldn't have a keyboard open and visible on the uh, for the user. So if you missed that, go ahead and feel free to check that out. Uh, also subscribe, please, if you have not already, so you don't miss out on the solid content that will continue to come out. Uh, and in today's episode, I know in the last episode I said, oh, we'll probably do that next, we'll probably do that next, but I was actually thinking of doing a bit more around epoxy. You know, this application is starting to come together a little bit, and I think it's going to be a bit better way to showcase the true power that epoxy has uh, instead of, you know, the other examples that we have in either the previous seasons or previous episodes, um, so we can dive a bit more into it. And so, you know, I, I was looking at this, these uh, garbage can icons here, and, and clicking them, you know, is a way that you can actually delete that particular item in the row, but, um, you know, a, a pretty common pattern for this as well uh, to remove an element in the list is to actually be able to swipe and drag, right? And so a lot of times you can either long press and kind of reorder or you can swipe and drag to dismiss or you know swiping left does one action swiping right does another action and and it's um you know i guess it's nice to have and so we could actually basically make the swipe to the right uh delete the element once the user swipes it completely off the screen and then we can get rid of our little trash can icons that just look not the best you know they're just like overly redundant for for no good reason uh, so Taking a look at the um, Airbnb epoxy wiki here, uh, they have a little example here of how everything, you know, what they have to offer and whatnot, but uh, they have dragging here and then swiping and further configuration. We're going to go ahead and take a look at swiping because we want to support, you know, being able to swipe the view off the screen. So we're going to go ahead and invoke the epoxy touch helper and knit swiping with our particular recycler view. Instead of left and right, we're going to go ahead and just modify that a tiny bit. Uh, unfortunately, this is in Java, so I don't really want to copy and paste it. So we're just going to go ahead and do it um, line by line here, I guess. So in our home fragment, inside of our own view created, we're going to go ahead and let's say set up uh, swipe to delete. So we have our epoxy touch helper and it's swiping on the binding dot epoxy recycler view. Left and right, so we want them to just be able to swipe to the right uh, with target. What was our model called? The item entity epoxy model. No. And then, and callbacks. I'm going to create an object that extends the swipe callbacks of type uh, this guy. So then we can do option, nope, not option, sorry, control I to go ahead and implement the members that you actually have to. Because uh, you can see here, there's a little red squiggly here and says basically it's not abstract and it does not implement the abstract methods of this base class here. So command I will bring up this little implement members and then command O, or sorry, control O will bring up the um, members that you can override. So I is the minimum and O is everything that the base classes have to offer. So we're really just going to be concerned about this, you know, for right now, the on swipe completed. And if we go ahead and take a look at the documentation here, it says um, in the on swipe completed function, you must use this callback to update data and remove the item at the given position. You must also request a model build on the epoxy controller once the data is updated. And then there are other optional things that we can go ahead and take a look at. Um, basically, we can hook into the different uh, like the life cycle of the swipe itself. So you can see the on swipe started, the progress change, the release, the clear view, and then 
uh, optionally if it is supported for a particular model. So you can have some like dynamic, some in real time logic instead of, uh, you know, to, to help in the transition or, or whatever it is you want to accomplish. So they really have built out a pretty, pretty well designed um, situation here. Uh, or systems so that you can basically do everything that you want. Um, so we're going to keep it basic for now and we're just going to handle the on swipe completed. So we get back our model here. So we can go ahead and say, so the item itself, item uh, that was removed is going to be our model question mark item entity. And now at this point we kind of need things to be non-null so we're going to use our little Elvis operator and then return if for whatever reason that is uh, null. So because at this point the on swipe completed, if you could imagine uh, this being able to swipe away, you know, this being able to swipe away, you know, this entire element would be moving with my mouse and then it would be completely gone from the list. However, if we killed the app and came back, like it would still be there. So the UI would be out of sync with the data. Um, so we need to fetch the item that was removed from our model that you know has this swipe being completed. Then we're going to have to go ahead and say shared view model delete item, the item that was removed. Uh, and then I don't think we need to call anything else because the delete item will go ahead and actually delete the element from the database, but then because we're using flow here and we are observing this uh, live data, we will trigger our flow to you know collect a new snapshot, populate that to the live data that is being observed here, and then when we set the live data on the controller, we actually request the model build, and then at that point our data should be in sync with what the user um, actually sees at that moment in time. So just going to take a brief look here. Right, so update the data removed, and then you must call the, yep, okay. So, um, this should should be enough, honestly, to actually uh, accomplish this, uh, this, this feature. So let's see, as you can see that it's now scrolling, and then, you know, if they don't do enough, it'll snap backwards for you, and then as it goes, that's it, it's gone. Uh, then we can just uh, kill the application, run it again, and boom, it's no longer there. It has been completely deleted from our database, and if we go ahead and take a look, there's only five elements in our database, and there's one, two, three, four, five elements in our database as well. Uh, I wonder if this will actually update in real time, so if we delete it, ah, so we just might have to refresh the table. Yep, and now you can see there's only four elements in the list, so only four elements in, or in the table, only four elements in the, in the list here. So now our UI is completely in sync with our, uh, our, our database. And we've implemented something that actually used to be a lot scarier <laughs> than, um, than this. So Epoxy really kind of has this tremendous system built out for you. And then as you can see here, they also have the ability to drag and drop to essentially reorder. And you can see that in this little GIF here. Um, as soon as they do it, whenever they will, you can see them drag and drop and, and uh, the elements kind of fly around and whatnot. So, you know, I guess we kind of have accomplished or we can accomplish that with our own sorting or maybe the, our priority level. Uh, but it's nice to know that if we want to implement that feature, it probably will look something similar to this, which is just, uh, which is just fantastic. So with that being said, I think it's okay to now go ahead and remove the gross trash can that exists here. Um, and to the start of, what is this called? Priority text view. And this one as well, it's priority text view. So now we go all the way there. It's a little bit of cleanup. And then inside of our model here, we do not have that image, or sorry, yeah, our epoxy model, we no longer have that image view so we can't uh, do that. We're going to go ahead and delete it from our interface because there's no reason to have it anymore and then we can actually go ahead and delete it from our implementation. So uh, just going to run things again to make sure 
that uh, everything, you know, we didn't miss anything when we were ripping that that out, uh, and kind of refactoring our code base to just no longer have that little trash can icon, and it looks to me like everything is good at this moment. And then, uh, yeah, wonderful, you know. And so once the data is completely removed, you can see, you know, the list kind of snap and and things look, uh, you know, look pretty responsive here. So that's uh, that's really good. And now we're sitting here on an empty state that uh, we clearly don't handle. So maybe it's time that we go ahead and update the empty state. And then I also want to implement this on bump priority, which will allow us to update the priority dynamically uh, from you know this like list view here on our particular items because I think we're going to have to go into a little bit of sorting soon so that we have elements in the list that are maybe let's say sorted by priority or sorted by the date they were created at because again this application at least the reason that I'm building it and the intention for it is that you know this is kind of your uh, a, a little shopping list of things that you need to get whether it's at you know I don't know some some home goods store or whether it's at the grocery store or something like Amazon, you know, et cetera. It's kind of just like a, a notepad that's on your phone and, and yes, a zillion of them exist, but we're going to go ahead and uh, build one of our own here and just continue uh, learning and, and showcasing different things within the Android system. And, uh, you know, in this episode, we really covered the swiping capability of epoxy and just how simple they've made this uh, feature or functionality uh, to us as developers, it kind of just makes a lot of sense when you look at it this way. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just cut it here. I think this was a pretty productive episode. Hopefully this is a little bit more interesting than some of the uh, the, the previous episode of just kind of, you know, some like UX and quality of life things. But uh, Epoxy is really powerful. I want to show it off. I want to continue showing it off and uh, drop a comment if you think that this was uh, helpful. I will catch you in the next one. We're going to go ahead and implement our priority bumping and uh, probably clean up this little, you know, empty state here that, uh, you know, at the moment the user has no idea what's going on. So uh, I will catch you there.